Hi guys, it's Mel back again. I am doing, uh, this is video number three. I wanted to do a little something different for this video. I wanted to get a little more close and personal with you. Uh, some of the things that I went over in my first two videos um, were kind of like logistics and, and the meat of um, everything for my journey. Some of these things that I wanted to go over with you are maybe some of the things that I, I missed during uh, my pre-op uh, or other information that I went over quickly with you that I wanted to go in a little more detail. So um, I'll start off. Uh, my surgery is 12 days away. I'm getting a little more nervous uh, and a little more excited as the days pass. I'm marking them off on the calendar. Uh, I am having the mommy makeover. I am having the breast augmentation uh, with lift and I'm also having the tummy tuck with muscle repair. So one of the things that I wanted to go over, uh, when I had my pre-op appointment, uh, I was sent in to do labs. So they wanna know what your clotting factor is for um, surgery. They wanna make sure that you're uh, able to clot and you're not gonna bleed profusely. So they do lab work. That wasn't covered under um, insurance. So that was something that I paid out of pocket. The other thing that they do is they do a pregnancy test. They wanna make sure that you're not pregnant. I wasn't, thank goodness. I'm done having kids. Uh, that's something that's important to also uh, mention is that when you're having a tummy tuck surgery, uh, it's best to be done with your childbearing years um, uh, for the best result. Um, some of the other things that I ended up getting, and I did have my insurance, uh, or it was covered under my insurance, is the EKG and also the mammogram. Um, the medications that they prescribed, I did get the prescriptions at the pre-op appointment, and I did go down and have my insurance, um, uh, or my insurance covered uh, those. Uh, let me go over the medications that they gave me. So they gave me Norco, so that's the pain medication. I have the um, Valium, so that is the, the muscle relaxer. And uh, I will say that uh, in talking with the surgeon, I wanted to find out if, um, if I was able to take a Valium prior to surgery so that uh, I can calm my nerves and keep me calm on the way there. The uh, surgery center is about 35, 45 minutes away from my house. So I can just imagine each passing minute that uh, my nerves will just uh, continue to grow. And I wanna make sure that uh, I stay calm that morning. So anyways, they said yes, that I could take one. Um, you are able to um, brush your teeth, but they don't want you to swallow any water at all. If you have to take medication, they said you can take a little tiny sip of water. Um, I'll try to make sure that I stay with that little tiny sip of water. Uh, I ended up getting um, the, um, the antibiotic, and so that will be taken um, for five days. And for my surgeon's office, they give the transderm um, patch. So what that is, is um, over three days, um, you put it on three hours before. It's a little patch that you put behind your ear um, after you shower that morning. And so um, it's supposed to last for the three days and help with uh, nausea. So um, I just wanted to go over again, uh, the type of um, incisions that I'm going to have for my breast augmentation, uh, if you're familiar with the lollipop and uh, anchor. So what they do is they cut around the areola, they uh, reposition the areolas higher, and um, 
they they take out some of the skin. It almost looks like a keyhole um, on your breast. And then they have the anchor uh, at the bottom. So when they have that keyhole, um, this part, what happens is um, when they're doing the lift, they're able to take the breast tissue and pull it together and sew it. So you end up having a, a round, um, round incisions at the uh, areola and then an incision straight down. Um, and then again, you have the uh, anchor at the bottom. And what my surgeon told me is when you do a bre when they do a breast lift, uh, what they end up doing is they take some of the tissue, and they have to send that to the lab. So what they do is they make sure that the cells in that tissue uh, are aren't cancerous. Uh, I'm not sure if that's mandated, um, but that's something that um, they do, and that charges a little bit extra. I believe it's like a hundred and thirty dollars. So uh, then you get the results. Uh, on that. Um, the um, one thing I did want to mention is um, two days before the surgery, um, I did ask my surgeon if I was able to start taking the um, colase. So that's the stool softener. I kind of wanted to see if I could get a head start um, to make sure that I wasn't going to have um, any constipation. That <laughs> seems to be a, a big a big issue. So, um, one of the other things that um, I was a little sad about um, is that I I do wear acrylic nails, and um, I need to have the uh, four of them taken off, the pointers and the thumbs. Uh, the rest of them I can leave on. Uh, I'm super sad about that because I um, I always have nails and uh, and I was hoping to keep them. But anyways, I can I can get them reapplied. It's just um, it hurts. It hurts to take these guys off. Ugh. And I'm gonna walk around for I don't know how long until uh, with with no nails on these fingers. But uh, okay, I'm over that now. Anyways, so uh, the other thing that I was really sad about and I'm having a really hard time with um, is they want you to not have any coffee, tea, uh, and I'm a huge, huge coffee drinker. So this was, was something that I am struggling with. Uh, I did half caffeine, half decaf coffee, and I'm kind of trying to try uh, to, to wean myself off so because I have 12 days, I totally have to be off the caffeine three days before. So I'm trying to not <laughs> have a coffee headache uh, while I'm going through withdrawals. I'm not doing such a hot job, but, and the only thing I can take is Tylenol for that. So um, I'm, I'm taking baby steps and, and <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll get there. I definitely will get there. Uh, the surgeon's office said to make sure to drink plenty of water two days before. You want to be definitely hydrated and want to make sure that you have plenty of water. Um, one thing I didn't hear uh, a lot of the other videos talk about is the food. Um, what you're going to be eating after the surgery. So you definitely want to make sure that you have low sodium food items. Um, because you're going to be swelling, you don't want to add to that. So uh, you wanna be on a low sodium diet. Um, the other thing was that since you're gonna be taking the antibiotic, you wanna make sure ladies that you take uh, or are eating uh, yogurt, uh, maybe the Activia that has the probiotics so you don't get a yeast infection if you're prone to those. Um, another thing is because you have the muscle repair and this, and this um, the corset uh, stitches. Um, a lot of people say that they're not that hungry, um, but you have to eat something with your pain medications to make sure that uh, you don't feel nauseous. So one of the things uh, somebody had mentioned was uh, the protein shakes. Uh, protein helps with healing 
And so um, if you can get the little protein shakes, um, that will give you your protein and you will have something uh, while um, to help not make you nauseous while you're um, taking your pain medicine. Um, some of the other things that I wanted to talk about is uh, family support. Um, I see a lot of the, the young moms, um, their kids are really little and, um, and this surgery is pretty extensive. So you need a lot of family support. For me, I have my uh, young adult daughter that's going to be here. Uh, my fiance that's gonna be here to help me. And um, my daughter's gonna be going back to school about halfway through, so my mom is going to fly in uh, and stay for a week um, to help out with cooking and, and um, cleaning and um, taking care of me and taking me to my appointments. Along with the uh, appointment, so I have a follow-up appointment the next day after the surgery. My surgery is at 9.30. Um, it is gonna be a seven hour surgery. Yes, seven hours. So that's something that, um, uh, that's a long time. That is a long time. Anyways, um, the next day I have an appointment um, at 12.30. And so I'll have to have one of my family members take me. Uh, that's gonna be a long car ride uh, there and a long car ride back. So I'll have to make sure that I have my pain medicine uh, in me uh, uh, on the way there. I did wanna say something about the, I mentioned the pain pump. So it is a round donut looking um, apparatus and um, it sits into a fanny pack there are two little teeny tiny wires that uh, are inserted into the pubic area and those wires go up towards the, uh, um, the stomach uh, where they've sutured and what that does is it dispenses pain medicine. Um, I'm not quite sure the timing of it. Um, they said that there is a little pump on there that I am able to dispense a little more. It's actually a numbing medication, I should say, not pain. So, and that will help for three days. Um, so that's something that uh, I definitely will show you when, um, after I have my surgery, so that you can see what that looks like. Uh, I wanted to make sure to cover um, the emotional aspect of the surgery. Uh, my doctor's office, my surgeon's office, um, they gave me a packet of papers and uh, in that packet, what I was really impressed about is they had a page that had emotional uh, and physical reactions and so it was really important to know that um, you're gonna be on an emotional roller coaster. You're used to seeing your body. Well, I'm used to seeing my body for 47 years. Um, and I've seen it morphed through all of, the, all of the three kids that I've had. And so even though you know that you're having surgery and you look in the mirror and you see this body and it's different and um, uh, I, I assume that you're gonna double take like oh my gosh this you know you, you have to get used to it so it's something that's gonna be a roller coaster and you add in the factor that you have um, you're not able to do the things that you're uh, used to do you you are sedentary you um, have to rely on people. Um, you have to ask people for help. And that's something that's really hard for a lot of people, including me. But um, I have a good family support and that's why it's important um, to have the family support behind you um, um, that, that will help you. So um, some of the other things, um, it's, it's uh, important to know is um, recovery clothing. 
Uh, it sounds like you definitely need to have um, button down items because um, you're not going to be able to reach your hands over your head. And um, larger uh, pants or shorts um, because you're going to have your drains. I'll have uh, two drains. I believe they are going to be coming out of um, the hip area. I'm not sure if they're coming out of the hip area or the pubic area. I don't, I don't remember um, what he said, but <clears throat> uh, so I, I made sure to get some clothes that uh, are easy on, easy off, and um, that are comfortable to lounge around in. Um, so I think I've hit all of the areas I definitely will vlog again. I want to make sure to continue to update you and keep you um, posted on what's going on. I think the next time, uh, my next video will be uh, the night before surgery. Uh, you'll see how nervous I am. Maybe you can calm me down, give me some helpful tips that will help uh, keep me calm, uh, allow me to sleep. Um, so, uh, I look forward to vlogging with you again. I, I'm super um, excited and happy with, with um, the support that's come across already from the videos. And if there's something you want me to go over that I haven't gone over, please let me know. If you subscribe, like, and share, um, I would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and um, definitely, um, we'll able to get the word out to other people that are having the surgery and hopefully uh, the story will help somebody else out in their journey uh, or give them the confidence to um, do a, a video for their journey. So uh, the one, the last thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to show you my stomach um, so that you have a good before and um, the reason why uh, I am having uh, my tummy tuck journey, surgery. So <clears throat> without further ado, I wear a size um, 8, 10. And so of course, after breastfeeding um, my three kids and um, I'm not filling out my bras uh, like I used to, there's a lot of room in there. So. If you see me from um, the side, you may say, Mel, what? why do you need to have a surgery? It doesn't look like you um, are needing something like that. Well, to tell you the truth, um, women have a really awesome way of hiding uh, their abdominal um, folds. And so I'll show you, and stretch marks. So here's my stomach. Um, I, you can see I have, I don't want to go too low. You can see I have a lot of stretch marks and you can see that this skin, um, is, uh, just hanging there. So from the side, without my shorts on, you can see there's uh, quite a bit of skin that needs to be removed. Now, interesting, the doctor said, um, it, the incisions will go from not from not from hip to hip like most of them, but he said he probably will be able to do from here to here. And all of this will be gone. So he will take out all of this. And I had a hernia surgery. And so with this hernia surgery, um, it was interesting because he said he thinks that this scar, he'll be able to get down to my belly button. I said, what, really? So I was surprised that he said that he could stretch that down so far. So we'll see. We'll see if um, he can get that down to uh, where, where my belly button is now. So <clears throat> I hope um, that this video is helpful and I look forward to um, seeing you the night before my surgery. And like I said, um, sub subscribe, like, and share, and we can get the word out to help some other um, mommies out there. Thank you so much.